Now I'd like to demonstrate some of the great new workflow enhancements in Combustion 4. First off, I want to import another composite. Now this is a great feature that's been in Combustion since Combustion 1, the ability to import another workspace. Very often, there will be multiple combustion artists working on the same project, each one creating different elements that then have to be brought and composited together. With the ability of importing a workspace, I can import as many composites inside of one workspace. You can also build and create as many composites or projects, whether it be paint, particles, edit, or text in one workspace. This is also a strong benefit when you go to render. If I go to the file menu, instead of choosing import, I choose import workspace. Now I can go out to my drive and select a combustion workspace and bring it in. Now that I've imported that workspace, you'll notice there's two composites inside of my workspace panel. The original one that I've been working on, plus a new one that has the words Rush Extreme Sports. There are many great new workflow enhancements inside of Combustion 4. One of them is the ability to reorder your branches inside of your workspace panel. For example, if I wanted to take the original composite that I was working on, I can just drag it up and place that above the new workspace that I brought inside. Another great improvement to the workflow of combustion is the fact that I can dock my workspace along the left side of my UI. To hold down the shift key and hit the F10 key, and now my workspace is docked along the left side while not interfering with my viewports. And while speaking of multiple viewports, we can now hotkey toggle between all the viewports. Let's take a look at some of the new workflow features inside of the timeline. As I select the layer, we know that all the channels that we can animate are available, and we can create keyframes directly in graph mode or in overview mode. New in Combustion 4 is the ability to filter what channels you want to view or work with. For example, if I hit the P key on my keyboard, now only the position channels are available for this layer. If I wanted to add more, there are several other hotkeys to add other channels. Also, let's say I wanted to go to my surface properties, and I wanted to select multiple surface properties and only have these visible and filtered inside the timeline, I can very easily now come out to my flyout and choose Add Channel Filter, and then I can enter a filter preset name, and now only those channels are available to me. This channel filter preset will now be available to me anytime inside the timeline flyout. Another great improvement is the ability to view rulers inside of my viewport by simply choosing Show Rulers. Now I have rulers along the left and top side of my viewport. And now just by clicking and dragging from the rulers, I can create guides for precision alignment. Double clicking on a guide's control allows me to enter an exact pixel amount I want that guide to be at. I can also access these options from my right click or control click on the Mac. I can also show grids inside of my viewport. Now that I've got my grid set and guidelines out, I can go to my preferences where you'll find a whole new preference category for your grids, your guides, and your rulers. I can change the spacing of my grids. I can change the subdivision amount of my grid. I can adjust and control the snap tolerance for my grids and my guides. So these are just some of the great new workflow enhancements. Some of the other enhancements are command line rendering, open EXR export, and the ability to create increments on save.